Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. Here we talk all things love assumption and psychology and how to make your life better. So if you like this kind of content, please make sure that you like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, but let's get right into the video. Today, I want to talk about TikTok myths. Now, it's not just TikTok, it's also YouTube, it's YouTube Shorts, it's literally almost every other video that I see, which is kind of annoying because it just upsets me that a lot of people get misinformation and maybe think that they're doing something wrong or that they have to do something in a very specific way. This also goes for tarot readers, by the way. I might make a separate video about that. And I'm pretty sure this will not be the only part that I will be making about this, but Today, let's talk about some of the most egregious ones that I've seen, especially recently, to make sure that you don't fall into this trap and you can manifest whatever it is that you want. So the first one, probably the worst one I've seen, especially because, I, and I don't like want to call out to anybody specifically, but this is a huge creator in this space. We're talking millions and millions of followers. And this person has been teaching the law of assumption for quite some time, and I saw them do a live not too long ago, where they were talking about, well, you know, you need to trust the universe. And if you can't manifest the person that you want to manifest, the universe will bring you something better. It's always this or something better. You have to trust in the universe. That is classic law of attraction. There's no way around it. The law of assumption states that you're the creator of your reality. And if you fully understand this process, you would not be telling people that they can have this or something better or that they have to give it up to the universe. Especially because when I see people who then say, you know, I've never had a relationship, but I'll help you manifest marriage. Like, how would you know what it takes to actually manifest marriage if you've never even experienced an actual proper relationship? Like you are teaching something that you say yourself, you haven't even experienced, you haven't even manifested that. How can you teach someone to manifest something you've never even done yourself? It makes no sense to me, but just in general, understand that everything that includes or encapsulates you giving your power away, however that, that scared me, <laughs> sorry, whatever that looks like is law of attraction or some other spiritual teaching because I say this over and over again and people get mad at me, but the law of assumption is not spiritual. It's not spiritual. Yes, there are people who say it's spiritual law. That's fine. They can feel that way. I don't feel that way because to me, everything can be logically explained through science and psychology. That's just my background, where I come from. To me, there's nothing spiritual or woo-woo crazy about it. Yeah, you have to be a little bit delusional, but I'm of the mindset that if something is demonized by society, whether that be, you know, mental illnesses or delusion or anything like that, there's usually a reason for it because not everything is just always bad. A lot of it is also good. And in my personal experience, the more general society deems it bad, um, there's usually something to look into that might just mean that you're not as easily controlled, which is not beneficial to, you know, the greater good, if you know what I mean. I'm not gonna get into this now. I might make a separate video if anyone's interested, but let's get into the next one. Energy healing. You have to have energy healing. You have to have your blockages removed. I also saw someone recently make a video saying robotic affirming doesn't work because the only way to manifest is to work with your nervous system and regulate your nervous system and basically remove those blockages. What, what do you think, like where do you think regulating your nervous system comes from? You have to work with your brain. If you affirm that something works, that's how it works. If you affirm robotic affirming doesn't work, then it won't work for you. But everything is regulated through your brain. So even your nervous system responds to the way that you take in information from the outside things that have been saved in your subconscious as danger, for example, right? We find all these things dangerous that don't even make any sense that we were, that were passed down through evolution and stuff like that. So saying that manifesting doesn't work, but it works if you use your nervous system, you're still proving yourself right. You're still making an aff affirmation and a statement and assumption where you're using manifestation to try and prove manifestation wrong. Like it's just, it's this circle that you can go around in that makes absolutely no sense. You don't need energy healing. Even I do, you know, on my account, I do free like energy healing Reiki sessions because it helps a lot of people. I also find it to be helpful. I don't find it to be a negative thing. 
But you have to understand that just because something is beneficial to you doesn't mean that it's required. This is, I only want to talk about things that you can use if you want to, but I don't want you to feel like you have to or you're obligated to in order to get your um, manifestation. That's not how it works. The next one is techniques. Now, if you see teachers who teach you a new technique every single day and then tell you, well, this is the one, this is the one now that the only one you need, this is the one and I came up with it. Just know they're doing this for content reasons. You don't need any techniques. It's nice to have them because it like eases us into what we're doing and it gives our brain something to do while we're doing um, our affirmations and our manifestations. So it, it helps us maybe be a little bit less distracted or maybe not look into the 3D as much. But techniques are not required. You don't need them in order to manifest. They're nice to have. I like doing them sometimes, but I find that the fastest results I get is when I just record my affirmations and listen back to them, or I take some time out of the day to just affirm them in my head. We all have thoughts throughout the day. We're all thinking about stuff, whether you actually have an inside voice or not. You still take in your world in some way, shape or form. You still process memories in a certain way. So whatever your brain is leaning towards when you're thinking about a memory, for example, that's the natural way I would say you would normally manifest. And regardless, even if you don't have an inside voice, you can still affirm out loud. I've seen some some people also said, you know, oh, affirming out loud doesn't work as well or using recordings doesn't work as well. But if that were true, then all of these things that your subconscious took on as real that weren't your own specific affirmations, maybe you watched something on the news or whatever the case may be, or someone said something to you, then those negative beliefs that inherently weren't yours to begin with wouldn't have imprinted on your subconscious and you wouldn't be manifesting all this negative crap. So that makes absolutely no sense. The next one, this is one that really grinded my gears when I heard about it. I actually blocked this creator because I've seen them repeat this over and over again. I thought it was horrendous. Um, your trauma is your fault. Now, in this particular instance, I think someone asked about childhood trauma and they basically said, well, you manifested this because you were desperate even as a child. I about lost my mind when I heard this because it is not your fault. There are different ways that you can go about this and see this. But what we know from science is that your subconscious is one of the first things that develops as a child while you're in utero. And up until the age of, well, there's different accounts, but let's say between five and seven years old, your entire brain runs on your subconscious only. Your conscious isn't really doing anything because you don't really need it. So your subconscious is running the show. Can you imagine all the crap that you're taking in during those five to seven years, you are literally like a sponge. I mean, people always say kids are like sponges. That's literal. You are a sponge to anything and everything that you are surrounded by. And you are being trained whatever your surroundings were trained prior. So if this is someone who has no idea about manifestation, has no idea about how it works, doesn't really work through their own trauma, and then they think it's okay to do something to you, that is not your fault whatsoever. 99.9% .9 of the negative things that we manifest are not our fault. There's a difference between it being your fault and it being your responsibility to change once you learn about it. And I think there's also this, this narrative of like, well, you're in victim mode. Yeah, sometimes we can be in victim mode and it's difficult to get out of that because we have very valid experiences that hurt us and that traumatized us. But we also need to understand and realize that waiting for an apology um, for something, for example, is holding us prisoner. We're holding ourselves prisoner and giving someone else the key to free us, which they might never use. So I think it's always a choice between being in victim mode and wanting to change your life, which unfortunately does mean having to take some responsibility for it in terms of, okay, this happened to me, but am I going to let this define me? And am I going to let this keep me prisoner for the rest of my life? Or do I actually want to be happy? Do I actually want to move on with my life and not give this person any more power and understand that, I was brainwashed and I was born into this and I didn't have a say back then, but now I am adult and I have a say now. And I know that the way to hurt the people that hurt me is by living my life and be happy, right? I mean, oftentimes when it comes to hurting others, it's about a form of control. It's about a form of keeping them in this dynamic, right? And the more you 
alleviate yourself from that and remove yourself from it and really find comfort and peace and happiness in yourself and maybe even then manifest justice for yourself. Let's say something happened to you and you never got the justice you deserve. Once you realize that you can manifest, even the justice system isn't out of your control. It is in your control. Now you can manifest getting the justice you need in order to let go and move on with your life. I can't think of anything better. The amount of times that I see people who have been victimized that haven't gotten justice and that never got over it, it's just heartbreaking. So you are in control of every aspect of your life, including that part where you felt you were wronged even after the fact, right? I've also heard of people who have revised trauma, who actually said, you know what, I don't really want to live with this. I can't really live with this. It's affected too much of my life today as an adult. So what I did is I revised the way that my childhood was. And I did this partially. I've told this story before um, where there were some instances that really traumatized me that I revised as if they never happened. And when I spoke to the person who traumatized me, they actually said, what? This never happened. Their memory of it changed as well as my memory of it changed, which then in turn changed the way I interact in certain situations today. So you even have that capability and that power to remove that from your memories today and replace it with something a little bit, you know, nicer, easier to digest or whatever you want to like replace it with. So you have the chance and the ability to have a happy, fulfilled life as an adult versus reliving your childhood trauma in all kinds of situations over and over again because you're getting re-traumatized and I, I don't believe that anybody should be living like that. Like it's it's heartbreaking to think about. So I don't want you to feel like you're imprisoned for the rest of your life in whatever happened to you because it happened to you, okay? So if anyone is ever telling you that it's your fault or that you consciously manifested that, especially if you were a child, please just, just ignore them and block them because this is incredibly toxic and it's incredibly harmful and negative and it's something that shouldn't even be said because it's not true. Like just flat out, I just want to say flat out, it's not true. All right, the next one. You need to affirm for 21 days. Um, you don't need to affirm for 21 days. There are studies that support that neural pathways build themselves over time, depending on how often we affirm and how long it takes and things like that. But you can affirm 10,000 times in one day and be done with it. Now, would I recommend you only affirm for one day? Not really, because you might be able to get your manifestation, but the ultimate goal is to get into the general state of having what you want, embodying it fully. And that can take a few days. So even if you get your manifestation, I would affirm on top of that. But I do see a lot of people when they give you challenges and things like that, they always say you have to affirm for 21 days. That's an affirmation. That's you pushing your manifestation further away than is necessary. But the benefit for the people who are teaching you is that you have to come back and keep reminding yourself and maybe keep checking in with them and all of those things. So it keeps you in this loop of I need coaching and I'm doing this and it takes so long. And, you know, during that time you might get discouraged. So you go back for more content. You always have to ask yourself, like, is this really to my benefit? Is this really an affirmation I want to take on? Or is this maybe benefiting the person that's giving me the affirmation more so than myself? Because if I'm a limitless creator, then I can have whatever I want. So who is some stranger to tell me that it has to take 21 days? It doesn't. It can, but it doesn't have to. If you're someone who likes to affirm for long periods of time, all the more power to you. But I personally am an impatient bitch. I want my stuff when I want it, like immediately. So I'm someone who likes to affirm that I get my stuff a lot quicker. And then I just keep affirming over it until I get into that state. Now, the last one, shifting is the same as manifesting. Um, it's not the same at all. Manifesting is what you consciously and subconsciously do throughout the day. And shifting is, I would say, very close to lucid dreaming. So you're basically disassociating yourself from your current state. It's almost like you fall asleep and then you visit a different reality. I'm not saying that those realities don't exist. I mean, there's infinite amount of realities. Hogwarts could exist for all we know, right? Or whatever place you want to shift to, the upside down or whatever you want. I, I don't really care. Realistically, 
if you're comparing manifesting to shifting, I would say shifting is more fantasy based because you're creating this entire world from scratch where manifesting is more reality based, where you're in the reality that you're in, you're on planet Earth, whatever, like whatever is around you, and you're just choosing different versions of that particular reality. Now, I did hear stories before of people who shifted into these fantasy realities and didn't come back. Um, I don't really know how that looks like or what that looks like. It's the number one reason why I don't shift. I've never done it. I'm terrified to do it. I would rather, if I wanted to shift, I would rather daydream um, more so or just like visualize fantasize if that's really what I wanted to do. I'm a writer, so I lived that out through writing. I used to write fan fiction as a teen a lot. <laughs> and that sounds dangerous to me. Um, I'm not saying shifting is dangerous. I'm just saying for me personally, I'm too afraid to do it just because I know what our brain is capable of. But I do think there's a huge difference between what you're doing when you're shifting, what you're doing when you're manifesting, because if you're shifting and you're com you come out of it, you obviously come back to your current reality right now. So you're getting out of that state and coming back into reality, but reality is still the same regardless of where you shifted to or how or why, right? That's why people also say you need to write a script when you're shifting so you can like stay on track and you come back and all of those things. So they're not the same. I think that if you know how to shift and you shift into a form of your current reality that embodies the state of what you want to manifest, I think it could be an incredible manifesting tool and a technique, if you will. But again, I don't believe it's the same, but I think it can be used in a really good way to speed up your manifestation if you can uphold that state that you shifted into once you come out of that shifting experience. But from what I understand, that's not what shifting is for. Like most people just use it to escape reality. So shifting is escaping reality and manifesting is shaping your reality. So if you wanna do both, I think you can do both. You just need to understand that just because you shifted does not mean you manifested and manifesting is also not shifting. I really hope you liked this video. If you have any more questions or if you've seen TikTok videos that kind of made you feel weary or you had questions about, please leave a comment down below. I would love to make a part two about this if anyone is interested because I know there's so many questions and there's so much confusion and oftentimes it's limiting negative beliefs that other people put onto you that you don't need, that you shouldn't have to take on as your own. They're not yours and there's really no need for it. So if you have any more questions, please leave comments down below and I will see you in the next video.